Next one is Bobby. He says, why is branding so important for local SEO? And can you talk about how to improve brand authority? Yeah, that's another good question. So why is branding so important for local SEO? Um, because Google recognizes and rewards entities now. And in part, is it's a way to eliminate spam, right? Or at least reduce spam. Um, you know, we as SEOs, we know how to still build authority to pseudo brands and all of that. But for the average person, uh, you know, Google rewards brands in established entities. And we, you know, I've talked a lot about what I call expanding the entity footprint or informing the knowledge graph, which is a term that I learned from uh, Jason Bernard from Calicube Pro. But essentially, branding is important for the semantic web because it's a way to establish and build authority to a local entity, it, to an entity in period. But we're talking in context of local SEO. Okay. So, Establishing a brand or an entity and then building authority to that makes all other SEO efforts uh, easier, right? It's easier to get results with SEO if you have a brand that is well recognized by Google. So establishing a and building strength or authority to a local entity. Well, how do you do that? One of the ways that you do that, and I've talked about this for years now, um, is by expanding the entity footprint, which is going out and helping like engineer the knowledge graph. For Google, and then not just building the knowledge graph, but assisting with discoverability, which means, it, and I, I use this example all the time. Some of you, I'm sure, have heard me to say this, but it's like a knowledge graph is like a jigsaw puzzle in that it's if you take a, if you buy a jigsaw puzzle brand new in a box and you dump it out on a table, it looks to be random, odd shaped pieces and everything else. But you know that when you organize them properly and assemble them the right way, it creates an image, a picture. And the more pieces that you assemble properly and put together in the appropriate order, the clearer or sharper that image becomes. Does that make sense? It's very much like that with a knowledge graph for a local entity or any entity, but we're talking in local SEO context here. So when a brand first establishes itself and verifies a Google business profile, which is an entity validator, um, it's very little that Google has a little bit of an idea of what this entity is, and it might have little bits of scattered data on the web that corroborate or validate that information, that entity information, right? But so how can we improve that? How can we add nodes to the knowledge graph so that Google can form a sharper or clearer image of the local entity? Well, building branded profiles or present, building a branded presence on as many different websites around the web as possible, especially those that are relevant, right? But not just building a present, a presence, because again, that is leaving it up to Google to find it somewhere on the web and associate it with the entity. So I always talk about three levers that we should be pulling to optimize for the semantic web. Number one is entity association. Number two is relevance. Number three is corroboration, data validation. I just talked about associating the entities and I talked about relevant sources and I talked about uh, corroborating data, right? So by expanding the entity footprint, we're actually pulling all three levers there, right? Because we are associating entities, meaning it's the local entity, but on all these different properties out there, which are entities in and of themselves, right? So we're associating entities and then we're also, and we're also telling Google, hey, this is us, this entity on these other platforms especially when they're relevant platforms, that, that makes it more valuable, more powerful. And then number three, corroboration, we can reinforce the local entity information, name, address, phone number, website, hours of operation, details about the products and services the business provides, the, the service areas or the locations that it services, et cetera. We can corroborate data on across those assets and then interlink them and place them in strategic places to assist with discoverability. That means like, I, I, again, I hammer away at this all the time. Google business website, it's a Google property. The Google business website, when used properly, is incredibly powerful. When not used properly, which most people don't, it really has no benefit at all, which is why I see a lot of SEOs that come into our ecosystem that don't publish Google business websites because they probably don't feel that they're providing any value. But a Google business website is a Google property. So if you have well-developed content in the main content area of the GB website, and then you link out with contextual links to especially branded assets, not so much supporting assets, but branded assets, the Google bot's going to come crawl it, and they're going to discover those links and crawl those links. Whether they index them or not doesn't really matter. What matters is that they are crawled. And from a Google business website, the links will be crawled. 
Same thing with Google Posts, Google Business Posts. If you use the CTA button, the Learn More button to link out to branded and or supporting assets, as well as additional product and service pages on the money site, now you've got, again, Googlebot's going to crawl it. Whether it indexes or not, another story. It's still going to crawl it. Okay. Same as attributes and schema. If you're doing structured data, local business schema, same as attributes, you reference URLs there. They're not hyperlinks, but they're reference points that the Googlebot reads and will go read that link and understand, okay, again, it's about assisting with discoverability. Another one, G site, Google sites, Google property, taking a G sheet, putting all of your links in the G sheet and then publishing the G sheet, embedding that in the ID page, for example. Those are all ways to assist with discoverability, to expand the entity footprint, help engineer or inform the knowledge graph, right? Form a sharper image of the local entity in Google. And so uh, again, it's so very important to do that. And Syndication Academy actually, you know, we've had Syndication Academy since I think 2014 was when we launched it. I believe it was 2014. Yeah, it was 2014. And it used to be that we would uh, build out the branded assets and interlink them and all of that. This was pre-semantic web era. Uh, and it, then we would use IFTTT to trigger syndication from RSS feeds from the, the money site, the blog, or YouTube or both, um, that then would cascade or syndicate out across the, the branded uh, network profiles from the syndication network. And that was what I did for SEO for like three years. That was all I did, I swear to God. And I crushed it for, for several years with my agency doing nothing other than that. No kidding. Um, it's not so much the case anymore, uh, but why Syndication Academy is still valuable is because we teach how to expand the entity footprint, how to find these properties, especially properties that are particularly powerful, how to set up a profile, optimize them, interlink them when possible. And we do that twice a month, Essie does anyways, which is our trainer at Syndication Academy. So can you talk about how to improve brand authority? Yes, ex expand the entity footprint and then build relevance to those assets and help with discoverability, as I just described. Google Business Website, ID page, same as attributes, uh, Google Business Post, G Site, G Sheets, all of those things to assist with discoverability. And then again, as you continue to expand your entity footprint, building links to those assets, not any kind of link, relevant links, topic and or geographic relevance, if that makes sense. That's how you push authority and make those more valuable. By the way, in case you guys don't know this, you, if you use Majestic, because I, you know, I know Ahrefs and SEMrush and all them pick up a lot more links than Majestic does. That's because Majestic has an, a filter built in to eliminate what they call noise, which are links that are not significant enough to be brought into the analysis, like to, to show you. So, and that's all I use for backlink analysis is Majestic. You oftentimes don't see Web 2.0 links, branded asset links in your profile for Majestic until you start building authority, building relevant power to them, right? Pushing power to them through relevance and quality links. And then all of a sudden you start seeing them popping up in the backlink profile, the branded bloggers, tumblers, WordPress, strikingly, uh, Weebly's. You start to see those pop into the backlink profiles when you build authority to them. So it's one thing to build the assets. It's another to help with discoverability and it's another to build authority to them. Those are how you, it's kind of a progressive prog uh, a process that um, ensures that you're really pushing a lot of brand authority. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. But what's interesting is if you follow the Syndication Academy method, the training, which I don't recommend any of you do, I would recommend instead that you would get the Syndication Academy training uh, and then put a VA into it. Um, because again, it's, it's VA type work in that it's not something you should be doing, but it is valuable. So you can hire that out for five, six bucks an hour, you know, overseas Philippines or something like it's fine, five or six bucks an hour and have them go in and just consistently build a handful of web 2.0s and interlink them on a weekly basis, right? A couple of, a few hours a week is all you need. And over time, over the course of a few weeks, a couple of months, you end up having uh, really increasing the authority because you're forming a very sharp and clear image of the local entity in Google's mind. Does that make sense? It really does work. It works great. I've talked about this before, but with tree service contractors, it's for whatever reason, it's been always around month five. If we consistently build new web 2.0s and interlink them and all of that, sometime around month five is generally when things like just boom, just pop in maps and just stick and I'll become almost unmovable. And that's part of the reason why I don't like doing just straight up retainer work for my tree service contractors anymore, because a lot of the times in the winter, they cancel services or suspend services for the winter. But then come spring, they're still ranking because we built their entity up so much that they just become damn near unmovable. 
that makes sense. And so it's almost like if you're too good at SEO, and I'm not saying that I'm too good at SEO, that's not what I'm saying. But if you do your job really well, um, sometimes when they cancel, they will benefit from your work for years. No kidding. And I'm, you know, so we can work ourselves out of a job is what I'm saying. Anyway, I thought that was a couple of great questions, guys. Uh, next one is